Good morning. Welcome to the Daily Coffee Chat with Ryan Frank. So glad that you are here. The number on the screen, 833-792-6372, is the number to text if you have a question, if you have a recommended topic, a recommended guest that I bring on the Coffee Chat. We'd love to hear from you, friends. Hope that you are doing well. It is midweek. It's Wednesday. And I want to thank you for joining me. Those of you on Facebook, good morning. Those of you listening to the podcast, Hello, those of you on YouTube, good morning, wherever you're at. I want to thank you for being here. Uh, we are days away, which seems very, very crazy how, how quickly this is approached. We are days away from Global Kidman Day, but here's the thing. It is not weird at all if you choose to do Global Kidman Day in November. Yes, it says August 8th, and those of you that are familiar with Global Kidman Day, you know that prior to the pandemic, the idea was that churches around the globe will gather on Saturday, August 8th at 9 a.m. your local time for a three-hour training event for volunteers. And then COVID-19 struck. So we have changed it up a little bit. We do have a lot of churches are still going to try to gather this Saturday on August 8th. But because of the pandemic, if you scroll down on the website, which the website is globalkidmenday.com, you'll see a COVID-19 update. There are a lot of options for you to still participate in Global Kidmen Day, even during this pandemic. If you want to gather your volunteers together in November, that's totally fine. If you want to do it in October, if you want to do this virtually and not gather your volunteers at the church, that's fine. We give you all the options and the tools to make any of that happen. Here's what we want. We want to be a blessing to your ministry team. We want to train your volunteers. We want to give them a shot in the arm for another year of ministry. We want to help you as you um, lead your volunteers during these bizarre, crazy days that we live in. For $95, you can train your entire team and ha have access to this three-hour training forever. I brought in some of the best speakers I could think of. It is super practical to help children's ministry volunteers, anywhere from those that work with uh, two-year-olds up to those preteens and every, everyone in between. The website is Global Kidmen Day. Dot com. Go check it out. If you've not been on the website, here are some speakers' videos, some videos from some of our speakers sharing why they are excited about Global Kid Men Day. Uh, this is our, our COVID-19 update. You can see the schedule. Uh, who are the speakers? What are they speaking about and when? We have our speakers are all featured here. Um, our hosts are there. And that's all kind of changed because of COVID, but big shout out to our hosts that are hosting a lot of them virtually. Um, yeah, there's the website. There's some social graphics at the bottom for you. Um, go check out, please, globalkidmenday.com. Our team is busy working on the fall issue of Kids Matter magazine. It will go to print pretty soon. This is the September October, November issue. I believe it goes to the printer next week. It is also our Megacon issue. So it's a flip issue of Kids Matter Magazine. If you're not subscribed to Kids Matter Magazine, we'd love to have you. My guest today on the coffee chat is Julie Heath. Uh, Julie is the children's product director or manager over at CTA. CTA is a great ministry. Um, outside of St. Louis, I had the opportunity of visiting CTA and spending some time with their team a year or two back. We love the ministry of CTA. Good morning, Julie. How are you? Good morning. Thank you. Sorry if I popped in a little too early. Oh, you're good. Um, it's perfect. Yeah. Good morning. I'm doing well. We have absolutely gorgeous weather in this area today, nice. so enjoying it. It's not feeling like July in, or August in summer here. Exactly. So thanks for having me today. Are now our kids going back to school in Missouri or what the steps? Um changing. 
as, okay. you know, as yep. with everything. Uh, I think some schools are. I know some of the area schools are returning. Um, others are still in that state of tentative. You know, we're starting with the plans, but how are we also going to offer online classes and things? So still formulating in some counties and areas. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. So I reached out to our mutual friend, Julie mm -hmm. Jane Robinson. Yes. And I know there are a few Janes in the building. Yeah. <laughs> Jane Robinson. And last week, and I said, Jane, I'd love to have you on the coffee chat next week if you have any time. I think Jane is a great communicator. We have her speak at Megacon and stuff. Very passionate about ministry. Yeah. And she said, next week's actually a little tough for me, but you need to meet Julie Heath. Yeah. Julie Heath is our children's ministry <laughs> guru in the building. Yeah. In the building, yes. I'm not sure if I'm the best guru out there. Well, <laughs> and I said, I would love yeah. to meet Julie Heath, and I would yeah. love to have her on the coffee chat. Okay. So um, I'm telling you, so Jane set the bar really, really high. Yes, Julie. let me see if I can limbo somewhere near the edge. Yeah, you, it's all good. <laughs> yeah. You'll do great. Um, yeah. We we have lots of grace here in the building, so it's all good. <laughs> I need it. I need it. We all need it. Yeah. Um, Julie, tell us a little about your yourself, maybe your, sure. your background in work ministry. Yes, sure. Um, I've been on church staff, uh, starting as volunteer while in high school and children's ministry staff on church staff um, through school, seminary, um, after seminary, um, and probably my longest stint anywhere. I spent 11 years with the Tennessee Baptist um, denomination. Uh, convention, um, depending on how, you know, where you're from, what you would call it, but basically the state resource office for Tennessee Baptists. Um, I spent eight years doing collegiate administrative work with collegiate ministries, um, basically working with our student missions aspect of collegiate um, as well as events. Um, and then the last three years when I was with them, I was actually preschool children and student missions. Um, okay. Uh, in Tennessee, our WMU, which is a Baptist mission sending organization, um, our WMU is part of our state convention staff. So I was kind of dual purposed working with both yep. of those offices. Yeah. Um, and as a tag in on that, I also got to work with our children's camps for two summers. So um, any, anything from three You've to eight, I have, you know, and then some student, you know, college student ministry and and then doing some fun at camp. So kind of done a little bit of everything. So and just we had in, in part we had in common part of our background, yeah. Baptist roots. Yes. Yeah. So you so, probably yeah. know what you know what SNC stands for? Uh, You're a good Baptist. Sunday yeah. night church. Oh, yes. Well, see, uh, that was um, DT, discipleship training. Okay. Yeah. I'm, Western, right. I'm Western okay. Kentucky Southern Baptist. So. Okay. I got you. Yep. <laughs> or uh, a uh, union, uh, Sunday school union or something. When I was yes, really, really yes, yeah. 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 Um, so, yeah. and then I've just been with CTA since January, um, okay. no ministry self yes. relocating right before a, um, kind of international pandemic, really not recommended. Yeah, that's um, a perfect <laughs> ideal time to yes. move your family. I've um, your family start a new job. Yeah. yeah, so it's it's been learning a very different role because of course I've come from ministry background and CTA has ministry mindset but it's also yes. um, a little bit different. So learning a new new role, a new job, and a new city when nobody can leave their houses has been a little bit fun, but um, it's been exciting. And I am I am glad to bring that ministry mindset into the ideas of, you know, as a minister, what are what are the things that I could help create that can help children's ministers? Love it. You know, so. and, the, and the web the website for CTA is what's the website? CTA Inc. Inc. Dot com. Okay, CTA Inc. Inc. dot com. Mm -hmm. um, Andy, we we talked about this yesterday on the podcast sure. or on the coffee chat uh, because I was talking, I was teeing you up yesterday that oh, you were okay. my guest today, <laughs> and I said I know CTA just did this rebrand. They were mm -hmm. Christian Tools of Affirmation. I think before that wasn't Christian Teachers association or something yes like yeah way 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 back way back christian teachers yeah our christian tools for as well as christian teacher tools uh, association i think oh, there was God. some slide between those two at yes. some point in there and now it's christ christ to all to all christ to mm -hmm. all yeah. yeah yeah so a lot of great resources if you've yeah. not been go to ctainc.com um i again i was there a year back mm -hmm. probably maybe not even a year ago and toured their warehouse and met with their team. They've got all kinds of great stuff that they are sharing with churches. Um, all right, Julie, we're going to talk about events. 
But before okay. we do that, tell us just a little bit from your perspective, uh, the churches that y'all have worked with with CTA and then your ministry, how have you seen COVID impact what we're doing? Sure. Well, again, being new in the role and new in town and yeah. getting to yeah. learn things, it's been it's been more hearing than seeing. Yes. Um, but um, you know, I've have I have I still have friends, of course, on state staff in Tennessee, on church staffs. Um, my sister, even I guess, kind of as a sign of all of this, my sister, who was a, was an international missionary, relocated to the U.S. a couple of years ago, um, has become an interim children's minister really mid April, uh, you know, so just kind of hearing how they are adjusting and figuring out, um, you know, so of course it's, uh, how do you still connect with children when everybody is meeting by video? Yep. yep. Even though we've used video perhaps for years inside our ministries, it's been, yes, it's, it's, it's different. Um, and then anybody with any kind of childhood development ministry background knows that you can't just be video. There's got to be some hands-on children learn so many different ways. And, um, but it's been fun to, to hear about how, um, you know, my friend on state staff is how they've been encouraging churches and trying to provide resources and new ways for churches using video to do things. And, um, and then, you know, again, my sister's has been my most recent point of um, discussion is how they are slowly, she's in North Carolina, so how are they slowly rolling back into still meeting with groups? Um, you know, they still did a camp a couple of weeks ago uh -huh. um, and then how they had to space that out and, and reduce numbers and kind of doing shifts and um, the, but at the same time, it's just been encouraging. If that, if that sounds weird is um, when it's conversations with these leaders and things is, you know, children's ministry by nature, we are the creative figure out how to do it. People, children's ministry, youth ministers. I mean, I have yep. $2. How can I have an event for $2? Okay. Let me show you, exactly. uh, you know, yep. <laughs> um, so just, you know, encouragement and seeing how our folks are seeing those challenges and figuring out ways to meet them. Um, but it's been great to, I think, bring, the church back to where it's supposed to be is the church is the people. It's not that building. It's not that place. And so, um, you know, yes, it's been a challenge. I'm sure it's, it's been budgets that have been cut back or shifted. Um, but the most encouraging part for me that I've seen again in conversations is really just the hopefulness and the, okay, how do we do this reaction totally. from our children's ministry? How do you see this impacting events? I mean, especially I'm thinking we're going into, um, I mean, we just came through summer where summer's mm -hmm. pretty event heavy and kid men with DBS and camp and stuff. But now mm -hmm. we're not done. We're going into fall, thinking Halloween, mm -hmm. fall outreach, that kind of stuff. Thoughts, thoughts about events? Yeah. Um, for, you know, again, in my new role, that's one of the things that we've been looking at. What are the things that we have and how, you know, we've, we've had these planned for a while, but how can we help church ministers figure out how to use this in this environment, I guess. Um, you know, I think events, we have to rethink. Um, but again, with children's ministry, we've always had to be aware of registering for an event, of mm -hmm. planning volunteers and locations and figuring out how I can do an event in, you know, you know, if you're the small church in a rural community and you're trying to figure out how can I still do an event for my kids in a little bitty church building, I don't have a gym, how do I do this? Or even a, a big group that's got a big gym, you still can't have 600 people at a church, even when there is no COVID and not have enough volunteers and people to space those out. Yes, yes. Um, so, yeah, so I think for events, you know, I think our reality is we have to do the things we've always done mm -hmm. with a, with a slight increased shift in mindset of, okay, do I still, you know, and I think it's also a good chance for us to look at that as that trunk or treat or that fall festival or, whatever we've done. Is that a tradition because it's a tradition or is it something that it's a tradition that the community expects and in this new environment, can we make it an opportunity even more so to be out in that community? Is it, it's more equipping our families to, to be the church in neighborhoods uh -huh. in these yeah. fall festival events? Yeah. Um, you know, so down to the practical, is it, um, yeah, re register for um, register for your groups, you know, and do your planning ahead of, okay, this is my, here is my physical capability. I have a gym. I have a great big yard at my church or, you know, am I doing it in another location? Um, 
or okay, I've got small rooms and small spaces. So how can I do this event where we space the kids out by age level in rooms and rotate the leaders so that you're again, because you've got to consider that not just limiting kids interaction, but exposure, you know, where normally we might rotate the kids. Do we rotate the the item and the leader to the space? Um, and if you can't do that, I mean, there's, you know, you can't do a large relay game in a classroom, if, you know, okay, well then scheduling my rotations to allow a five minutes um, so you can space your groups out that you're not in the hallways at the same time. Yeah. Um, yep. You know, um, and I think uh, one thing that I was searching through even before we came to talk today is look at, um, I mean, there's all the opportunities online and children's ministers are probably well ahead of me in doing this, but look at your school. Most states now have a COVID guideline for schools. Mm -hmm. Look at those lists um, and, and take guidance from that because they may give you ideas of how, how can I think through spacing events. Um, and then again, I'm a camps person. So, I, you know, I automatically think, okay, you can still do games for events. Um, yep. And those may be a way, you know, do the games, do the things that you can space. And then send home the snack or the craft or the thing that you would normally have to group in a smaller space to do, um, you know, send home, you know, maybe do rotation of a ministry message or devotion time yeah. spaced out and then a games rotation where you can be in a bigger space and use, uh, you know, use the, again, most camps people and you children's ministry people, you hand them a, buckets and ping pong balls and a few pool noodles and okay I got a game you know <laughs> yeah. so yeah. you know just think through if you've got the standard games you play can you do how can you do your relays but use a pool noodle that each child keeps mm -hmm. as the handoff so that you space them out um I had uh, somebody you know of course we've got tape and chalk and things to mark up parking lots to keep spaces yes um adjusting the game uh, one of the things you know a lot of times our relay games are passing things yeah. um but you know in the socially distance area maybe it's it's a physical action that gets passed along. like it's do a silly pose and once that's done you know high five the air for the next person to go yeah. um and just rethinking those games i mean minefield at least that's you know like that's the perfect socially distanced game you get everybody away from them and one person has to shout the instructions for them to make yes. it through um so i think you know games are one of the easiest ways to still do those events mm -hmm. and keep them spaced um but i still think the the big picture that we've looked at is some of the opportunities for especially fall events is equipping families to do neighborhood things for children you know everybody's still uh -huh. going to be trying to figure out how to do we trick or treat do we trunk or treat That's it. do we you know um so providing tools um of things that you can suggest for your families at home of you know put things on your sidewalk so kids can line up for treats and um still visit you um and then, then thinking through being more proactive in what you are handing out to the, your neighbors or kids and or is your community still going to try to do a you know a light the night or you know all of the different type Halloween alternatives we've been doing yes. Yes. Um, really equip our families to be more missional in what they're doing I mean that's one of the things we actually it created is. this year are some treat stickers to put on treats on yep. and, and bags to put those treats in so that you prepackage things so you're not having a bucket of candy mm -hmm. You got your candy already individualized for that child to pick up so it's not hands reaching in um so just trying to to be the creative and flexible people that children's ministers have been and you know of coming up with um, ideas um, and just you know taking it as an opportunity to to help our families think you know that's been the great thing in this situation is um our church is gotten back outside the doors exactly that's true uh, yeah and you know children's ministers and youth ministers this has been something we've seen and been doing and working through and being missional and all of that but um all of our generations of church now have had to come to grips and some you know more happily than others but have had to try to figure out how to do church outside the doors 
Um, and so I think these events can be just one more way of, okay, how can we do this outside? You know, how can we take Jesus outside through this dance? Julie, I'm glad you mentioned um, yeah. like the stickers and stuff that y'all have, because I want to make sure yeah. if, you've, if you've not been to the CTA website mm -hmm. in a while and sh shop the store, you do have some, some things that churches could use even this fall. Yes, um, yeah. Um, mention two or three that come to mind. I know you mentioned sure. stickers for candy. Uh, stickers for candy, treat sacks is one of our standards that you can pop in. And in, in yeah. any of those things, we also offer small activity books and both for children's school age, seven to 11 and gospel fun is what we call them, the three to sixes that are yeah. mailable as well as could be treats that you give out that yeah. can tell the message. Um, we've created some events that as we were working through them, um, they're digital events. So as we were th working through them, just like we talked about these games, we tried to make hints of if you still do the event with people, how can you do this part socially distanced? Um, so there are some suggestions there. Um, nice. um, but yeah, the treat sacks, the, the booklets, we do have some, of course, we always have little um, this year, we've got some little bubbles, that, treats that are non-candy treats um, yeah. for, for folks coming by for trunk or treat or trick or treats, however your group does that. Um, so yeah, and then also uh, gospel message dog tags are really lightweight things that are kind of, oh, in a, cool. yeah, that have a message on them that are easy non-candy non treats that are great for your blue and teal pumpkin guests as well when you have all that they go to see if we all go to ctainc.com dot com you can i think you probably search yeah. by you holiday. could type fall festival seasonal. into okay. there there's shot by ministry and look for fall festival or seasonal right. um and you can nice. just kind of any which way you look for that or nice. look to children's ministry and go from there julie thanks for joining me Welcome. yeah I'm all right but before we go i want, want to do a screenshot so if you'll look so, at the camera and smile I mean, hold on, wrong button. One, oh. two. <laughs> Let's do this one more time. One, right. two, three. Got it. Julie, okay. thanks for joining me on the coffee chat. Welcome. Nice to meet you. All right. Be blessed. Great job. Bye. All right, friends. That is Julie Heath from ctainc.com. CT, ctainc.com. I'd love to hear from you. What are you thinking about the fall? As you think about Halloween, trunk or treat, fall outreach. I know there's a lot of uncertainty, a lot of questions. Um, let's get some conversations started in Kids Matters, I Love Kid Men Facebook community. Um, or if you want to text and let me know what you are thinking, just text the number on the screen, 833-792-6372. Tomorrow's going to be a great coffee chat, friends. Carl Bastian is going to be with me from Kidology.org. David Laughlin is going to be with me from Laughlin Magic. And uh, these are two great friends. We're going to have some great conversations. Hope that you will join me. Thanks for being here for today's coffee chat. Uh, we will see you tomorrow. Same place, same time. <laughs>